So here we go, we've got the little 107. We're gonna do some winter checks on it. We're gonna check the antifreeze content, make sure that it's gonna deal with the cold conditions because it's, you know, winter's coming, it's changing. We've not had a really good freeze yet, but it's on its way. So um, I'm gonna show you how to check the antifreeze. We're gonna use a couple of bits of kit. We're gonna do it with no special equipment at all. A real simple way we can test antifreeze content with what we've got around the house. And also, I'm gonna put the proper tester on it and you can see how to do it. You can buy these off of Amazon, they're about nine quid. They're not expensive. If it needs a bit in it, I'll show you how to top it up as well. So uh, yeah, let's crack on and check the antifreeze on this little beauty. All right, first things first, let's get inside. Get the bonnet up and find the lever under there. Give it a little pull. And then under the bonnet, just under here, we've got the little catch. So to check for antifreeze content, the first thing we've got to do is make sure that the engine is not red hot, it's not got lots of pressure in it. A tiny warm engine is not too bad, but if it's hot, don't do it. This is going to be pressurised and it will blow up in your face. These cooling systems, they run at around about 90 to 100 degrees when the engine's hot, which obviously is boiling point. So if you pop this cap off, it loses its pressure, the water just instantly boils up in your face. So, engine's cold, we can check to see if there's any pressure in the system by squeezing the top hose. The one that comes out, you've got your cap, it goes to the plastic thing, this is your top hose, coolant hose. If that squeezes, and it's not rock hard, we're fine to get that top off. We know there's no pressure in the system, so let's go for it. Push down slightly, twist it round, and off it comes. Right, so here's this antifreeze inside here. We have a look in there, we can actually see on all of these 107s, AGO C1s, it's long life antifreeze. It should be pink or red, pink and red. If it's blue, you've got to fill it with blue. If it's, if it's red, you've got to fill it back with red or pink. Pink is a long life, it lasts a lot longer and it doesn't corrode the system as, as quickly. It's got an anti-corrosion element to it, so the system stays cleaner, it's far better. So you've got two tanks. We've obviously got, we've got the top one, which is the pressurised system. And then this pipe at the top comes out of this, where the cap goes in, it comes out and it goes into this bottle here. When we've got another, another lid on it that says coolant on it. If we pop that open and have a delve in there, you can just see the fluid behind the plastic thing. Now on the side of the bottle, there is minimum and maximum. We need to check the antifreeze content in this one as well, because the two, they are, although they're linked, they're not directly linked. I'll tell you in a minute. Anyway, let's get on with checking the, uh, let's check the antifreeze content. So by far the easiest way of checking this is with an antifreeze tester, which is something along these lines. You can get these off of Amazon for about seven quid. They're not expensive. Ethnoglycol tester is what you're looking for, or ethylene. If you haven't got one of these, you can do it another way, and what you'll need is some way of getting the fluid out, or a small amount, so you can either use a straw, or Christmas time's coming, the old turkey baster. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we're gonna do is, if you've got the antifreeze tester, is squeeze the pipe closed, stick it in, Draw some of the fluid up into the tube, like so. Give it a pinch and see how many balls float. Now if you can see that look, we've got five balls floating, which says this will go down to minus 34 degrees, which is absolutely spot on, that's fine, that's, that's ideal. Just what we need. Squeeze that back into there. So we know we're good with that. Now then, if you haven't got a tester, what can you do? Bottle. Like I say, straw or turkey baster. Drop the straw into the top there, put your finger over it, draw some out, and then release it into the jug. And we don't need a lot of this. Do the same thing, repeat it a couple of times. That's 
cleanser so we've got some fluid in the bottle straight away visually you can see that that is it's a nice color it's a nice pink color so I'm pretty confident if I saw that I think yeah I'm pretty confident then that's going to be going to be good what we're going to do we're going to stick that in the freezer domestic freezers go down to around about 30 degrees something like that um, if we bang this in the freezer for half an hour we will know if we've got decent content in there if that freezes in the bottle we need to put some more antifreeze in if it stays nice and we're good to go so let's give it a bash let's whack it in the freezer and see how we get on right let's go to the freezer right so we've got the trusty old chest freezer in the garage and uh, let's just have a little look at this so just to prove to you what I'm saying uh, I know it needs a bit of defrost on it it's a bit uh, it's got a... <laughs> we'll lock a bit of ice in this freezer don't we so if I pop this on and was that into the freezer you can see there can you see there you see that we're running there at minus minus 24 degrees minus 25 degrees so she's pretty cold in there bottle of antifreeze in she goes half an hour we'll leave that in there for half an hour we'll come back and check it all right let's have a look then see what's up to this well as as we thought absolutely fine look absolutely fine not frozen at all so uh, that's good news if that was slightly slushier we still know we've got a reasonable amount of antifreeze in there but uh, worth topping up a little bit just draw a half a litre out pop half a litre in and uh, you know for sure then that you're really you're up to scratch with the antifreeze right. okay this is the sort of thing we're using to top it up with we've got the uh, concentrated summer winter antifreeze ethnic glycol based uh, which is pretty much what majority of the antifreeze is used I'll just whack a little bit in there just uh, just get this right up to the top that's there looks already didn't need a lot of it you know it's pretty good and then pop the cap back on right then so let's get into this bottle and check the antifreeze in there as well the reason we're doing this is because this engine this could be filled up with really good antifreeze content and this might have been forgotten it might have been left and, and just have neat water in it because this is the only thing that says coolant on it really this one says engine coolant but it says caution never open hot and all the rest of it you kind of think oh should I ever touch that one and you look in this one and top, top it up so this one might be weak of fluid also a common uh, thing is people actually put washer fluid <laughs> into this one thinking it's for the washers yeah I know right um, so if I drop my pipe into this one as well and then give it a squeeze and draw up the fluid again uh, let's get that uh, the air out of the system yeah which is we're, we're the same we've got the same We've got the same flow in there, the same amount, five balls floating, so we're good for minus 34 degrees. We'll get that back in there again. A really important note, antifreeze, if you spill it on the floor, cats and dogs, it will kill them. It is deadly for cats and dogs. It doesn't take a great deal to, uh, to cause them a lot of damage, kidney failure. Yeah, really, really, really important. Don't let your cats or dogs near antifreeze at all. If you spill a bit on the floor, make sure you clean it up. And it's sweet, it tastes nice, so they go for it, they'll want to eat it. So, let's just say then, this was low, it, the content was not good. How do we top it up? Now, the easiest way to do this is to just draw it out with your straw, with your, with your turkey baster, or with your antifreeze tester. Draw some of the fluid out of the tank and replace it with neat antifreeze. It's, you generally fill this 50-50, 50 water, 
50% water, 50% neat antifreeze. So 50-50 mix is, is exactly where you need to be. We're not too fussy though. If you go slightly more, slightly less, hey ho, it doesn't really matter. So we know that's good. Let's get the top back on that. Magic. Now if your level is really low, if it's just literally got neat water in it and you need to take a, a, a quite an amount out of the car, the quickest and easiest thing to do is to pop off the top hose. Because we only need, it's only a small engine, we only need to get around about a litre and a half of, of antifreeze into this system to make it up and running and absolutely perfect. It doesn't take a great deal. It only holds about three, three and a half litres. So we can pop off, we cannot, we can either, we can either just use this tool, just keep drawing the fluid out, binning it and filling it with neat antifreeze until the content level is right. Or we can take off this top hose here. We've got the clamp there, we just squeeze those two together, pull it back, wiggle the hose, pull it off, allow the coolant to run out, put it back on again, and then refill it with antifreeze. Generally, you don't need to do that. Just remove, draw enough out as much as you can till it goes dry, fill it with antifreeze to the top, turn the car on with the heater on, run it, for only for like 20 seconds, switch it off, repeat the process. Do that three or four times, you will then have enough antifreeze in the system and you'll be absolutely fine. So there you go, nice and simple, nice and interesting though. If you do not get that antifreeze right, your engine will freeze. It will freeze solid and ruin it. It'll pop core plugs out, write the car off pretty much. It's very, very common if it's had a leak. If you've had the water pump been leaking, quite common and you've just been topping it up with water, winter comes and the thing freezes up. Especially, it's not always first noticeable when you start the car up, it's when you drive along and it's a freezing cold day and the car overheats, you think, what the heck? And it's because the radiator is frozen. As you've been driving along, the cold air forcing through that is like a, a wind chill factor, minus 50 degrees plus, and through that radiator, and it just freezes the thing. Now, if you're interested, I'll just tell you a little bit about the cooling system on the car. It's a pressurized system, which means with the cap on, this cooling system runs at around about 90 to 110 degrees. Obviously, water boils at 100 degrees, so there's got to be a way of stopping it from boiling up and, uh, and failing. So we put the cap on here, the system sealed and the pressure builds inside the system because the pressure increases, the boiling point increases and the engine's fine, which is great. So on this system, what is the point of having this extra tank on the side? Well, what it does, this cap has got a one-way valve in it. It stops pressure coming out, but it allows air to draw in. So when the engine's hot and the system's pressurized, it's pushing against the cap, it won't let anything through. As the engine cools down, if there's been any coolant loss on the car, all the coolant contracts, it allows, the one-way valve in the cap will allow fluid to be drawn down the pipe from this extra tank back into the engine to keep this system fully topped up. Another thing to check on this is when we've took it off, look at the rubber on the back of the cap. Just have a little look at the rubber on there. Is it in good condition? Is it puckered? Does it look like a wafer? This one looks absolutely stu absolutely beautiful, so uh, we'll bang that back on again. Twist, push it all the way around till it hits the stop. Excellent stuff. I hope that's been of use to you. Um, if, if you've learned a thing or two, drop me a little thumbs up and like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.